Facebook. We have a question here uh, from a former University of Virginia student uh, whose name is Morgan Byrne Diakon, who uh, is currently working south of the Syrian border uh, and, uh, and is in our audience tonight and asks, I'm going to truncate this a little bit, uh, that Western and Arab media sources, I think society in general, are fixated on the idea of getting rid of one person, uh, in the case of Syria, Bashar Assad, uh, and that this will solve serious problems. Uh, as humans, we like to think it's that simple. Saddam Hussein, Hosni Mubarak, Gaddafi, uh, Ben Ali, despite the obvious fact that Middle Eastern history has repeatedly proven that simply removing the dictator rarely solves the larger situation. How do we get away from silver bullet thinking when the media so heavily presses this oversimplified train of thought? What I'd like to do, uh, Ambassador, why don't you take a crack at the silver bullet uh, idea of, of leaders and then, Severin, I think we should probably close uh, with just your final thoughts uh, on, because I think there's a corollary of the silver bullet uh, in humanitarian efforts, and just your final thoughts on all of this uh, in terms of that. Let's go to Ambassador Shepard first. We do use short, shorthand language when we say President, Al, uh, uh, President Assad, Bashar Assad of, um, of Syria, we uh, obviously mean the leadership that surrounds him as well. So it's his regime that frankly will have to face uh, some pretty tough questions in the future about the conduct of their military in this war, just as the opposition is going to have to face some tough questions as well. So it's, it's a much larger question than that. But I do think we have to understand that these international criminal tribunals simply are not designed to go below the leadership level because frankly there's no resources to do that. It's a far more ambitious process. You then have to turn to a local uh, judicial capacity to ultimately bring other individuals to justice one way or another, or perhaps through a Truth and Reconciliation Commission or Historical Commission to address the issue. But I, you know, I, I don't want to leave the, the individual uh, south of the border there under any misapprehension. This is very much a, a regime concept uh, uh, at the leadership of the regime uh, but no one is, uh, thinks that that solves the entire problem. That's, that's one part of it. It's the judicial accountability part of it at the leadership level. I very much agree with the person who asked the question. I, I think that that's one of the problems that we have when we're thinking about conflict. We're trying to find a silver ballot solution. So it will be let's remove the leader in power and maybe the regime or let's uh, resolve the illegal exploitation, the looting of resources, of natural resources, the looting of diamonds. Let's do that and everything will be fine. Well, as you said, every, the conflicts are extremely complex. So my answer would be yes, we have to embrace complexity. And we have to stop shying away from the fact that uh, doing, local, doing local judicial process in addition to the ICC would be the way to go and would be the way to, to, to bring justice to this population, just like doing peace building from the bottom up instead of in, in addition to peace building from the top down would be the way to go. And, and we, to, to me, that's, she, she really uh, puts her finger on one of the major problems that we have is that we try to find a simple solution so that we can then move on to the other conflict, to the next conflict, to the next issue on our agenda. Well, we should realize that when, when we intervene in any of these conflicts, it's not going to be a two-year solution. It's not going to be a five-year solution. Most of the time, it's not even going to be a 10 or 20-year solution. We're really there for the long term. We're really there, really there to deal with complexity. And if we look for the several solution, we're going to fail again and again and again. So endless wars.